Thank you so much, Mr. Peter Obi and Dr. Dati Ahmed for saying yes to the invitation to attend this town hall. We don't take your presence here for granted, and I'm sure our viewers are very pleased that you said yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Um, just a few things to note as we begin this conversation. In addition to people in the room who will be asking questions of the candidates, we have six remote locations across six geopolitical zones. And over the next course of the next two hours, we will hear from all of them. We have also collated questions sent to us via email and our social media platforms, and we'll try and get answers to as many of them as possible from our candidates. It is important that everyone who is asking a question state their name clearly and always be on point, as we must be mindful of time to ensure we get as many people to participate as possible. Okay, so two hours, a lot to get through. So <laughs> just to dive straight into it, um, there are 18 people who are presenting themselves to Nigerians, saying we are going to be the best president and vice president. Why should Nigerians elect you, the duo, the two of you? Well, it's for Nigerians to first try to scrutinize and look at our past, who we are, where we're coming from, look at what we're promising, and be able to verify whether those things we're saying we're going to do based on the past, can we deliver them? I mean, that's sort of like a very generic statement, but you are convinced you're the right people. And so I'm saying, what are the things that make you stand out from the other 18 people that are contesting? But maybe even from the front runners, the sort of six people that we are talking to in this town hall. Well, like I said before, it is a question of trust. If you say you're going to do, for example, if somebody said, I'm going to fight corruption. It is important to scrutinize. We know the parameter of measuring corruption perception in this, for example, you know, in terms of nepotism, in terms of managing public assets and using them for the benefit of the people. Can we check where the person is coming from? And if somebody says, I'm doing this, check the past that he made, like you mentioned in introduction, is an economist of this past, built a business, is running a university, and everything. So if he says, I'm going to do something on education, you say, well, listen, so they're doing this. Mm -hmm. If I say, I'm going to do this, what are these people doing? They've created well, they've managed resources. There's so many things you need to okay. verify and say, well, so, based on this, mm -hmm. maybe they will be able to. Okay. So maybe what we should do to make it easier for Nigerians is take some of the biggest issues facing the country and see if we can dive into them and what your ideas are regarding how to solve those problems. Starting perhaps with the biggest in, in the eyes of many people and which is supposed to be the speciality of the two of you, which is the economy. Um, we have a um, big deficit in our budgets, for example. Um, we are consuming things that are imported. We're not you know, a very productive country as things stand. The currency is in free fall. A whole lot of things happening with the economy. So um, from day one, what are the sort of things that you'll be looking at to rescue the Nigerian economy? If you look at all the past, all of us, we're the only people who emphasize that we're going to move the country from consumption to production. Because Nigeria is not a productive country. And the economy is at the base of all our problems. Yes, we have a security problem, but you can link it directly to the economy. Mm -hmm. Because when you have over 100, like they've just come out with the NBA, when you have over 130 million people living in poverty, you're about to have class. Mm -hmm. Because when people don't know where the next meal will come from, it becomes a security risk. So you're going to have class. So dealing with that, like you said, First is to look at where is the country in terms of economy. We need to deal with the issue of food to production. You need to look at how do you feed the country. Mm -hmm. That is a given. Considering that the, today, as 
We say it, and he says it everywhere. The greatest assets, physical assets of this country, is the all cultivated land in the north. But it still doesn't answer the question of the how. I'm going, to, I'm going to give you the yeah, how. Okay. So, what it is is that for us, you started with the issue of Puja deficit. Thank you. If you look, let me take 2021 budget. In 2021 budget, it's about 21 trillion, with a deficit of about 11 trillion. Mm. In that component of 11 trillion, you have about six, approximately yep. six trillion for subsidy. All these are approximate. By the time you remove subsidy, you've halved that because okay. I believe that subsidy must go. So you were explaining um, where you thought you could start to get saving as president, and you were talking about subsidy removal. If you can sort of explain a little bit not, more. Not saving, but how to reduce deficit. Deficit, yes. Which was your question. Okay. If you remove that, you have your deficit. And you, the question is, it is not in line with labor position. Right. So, so what we have heard from Labour um, shortly after you made the initial statement about the removal of um, subsidy is that they would they think in terms of it has to have refineries have to be working. You have to, there has to be certain conditions. Labour's position is that the removal you have to explain the alternative right. or how you're going to do to be able to ameliorate the increase in prices. And that is in place. What time today we have the Dangote refinery almost 90% completed. Mm -hmm. And we have some other modular refineries that are coming and everything, which you can as quickly as possible support for their completion and support other new ones that are coming up. Mm -hmm. So that removal alone will not, it will be a game something that you can do as quickly as possible and be able to still have the same product competitively priced that we are accepted. And then use the resources because I can't always say the, what you have today as subsidy, for me, is organized crime. Mm. And you can't continue that. Yes, I think Simple. many Nigerians would agree with yeah. that. You can't, you can't continue with that. So you can deal with it Labor is not against subsidy removal. Okay. They are against, if you're going to remove it, there must be something you're putting in place in order to be able to manage what is what going is to going follow. To and that we're going to do aggressively. And that if we're done to remove it, deal with the other components of fiscal rascality, like be able to bring the rule of law and manage corruption and everything, you'll be able to bring the deficit down. Okay. I, I will come back to that. I want to bring um, Dr. Baba Ahmed in here because he's also an economist. Um, when we look at um, some of the utterances that you and Mr. Obi have made around the way you're going to turn this country around, it seems to be market-driven, capitalistic, and the Labour Party calls itself a socialist party. So there seems to be a little bit of a disconnect between your ideology and that of the party you are representing at the polls. Are we misunderstanding this? Is your ideology very close to the labor ideology, which tends to be socialist by their own saying, based on the, um, what they say about themselves in the documents we've read? The ideologies have been completely misunderstood, I beg to say. Labor is not, has never been a socialist uh, inclination. I can quote them. And the document I have. No. The um, way they describe themselves. When you speak about the founding principles of yes. communism and socialism, yes. uh, what we have as labor um, is uh, not resting on those principles. Right. Uh, the labor, as we have it in the context of parties, are those from the welfareist state. Now, welfareist began with an economist call 
called, forgive me, I, I can't remember the name right now. Um, uh, in the 50s, Margaret Thatcher, for example, made a huge success uh, out of welfareism and uh, labor politics in the UK. She, she was a conservative. She was a conservative, but the labor unions grew powerful and uh, made a success uh, of their drive during her era. Right. Um, please, market-driven strategies of any government, including China and Russia, are never at loggerheads or against the principles of what we call labor. Right. Labor so, so you don't a, see a contradiction? No, there, there is no contradiction. Okay. Uh, anything. Okay. There is difference from welfareist doctrines and then the principles of communism and socialism okay. that have proven incapable of standing the test of time. Right. So let's go back to details of the how. So you've talked about um, removing subsidy, I'm using modular refineries. Just for yes. deficits. Yes, uh, for deficits. Remember, deficits. Yes. And where you can call the deficit because it says who deficit. Yes. And I'm telling you how to call it. Yes. So. Okay, so what, what is the position of your party when it comes to um, the other parts of life? Chamberlain. I remember the name now. Chamberlain, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so we've seen, Sorry, for sir. example, the issue of multiple exchange rates and the impact that has had on the economy, the lack of confidence, the going up, the going down. What would be your position? Are you going to go for a unified um, foreign exchange regime? Will it be a staggered thing that you are going to do? How are you going to deal with this disparity when it comes to Naira? and the value of the Naira, and how to sort of give it a little bit more oomph, if you like. Well, what you need to do is to look at the issue of why is Naira weak? That's where you start. Mm -hmm. The Naira is weak because of your, the weakness or strongness of your currencies, I mean, by your reserve. Because you have low reserve, the Naira is weak. And low reserve is driven by low export. You don't have enough export that is bringing in foreign revenue. And that's where you have to look at it. All this exchange must be there, everything. If you have the right export component and everything, which is why I said the country is not productive. If the country is productive and doing what they're supposed to do, you wouldn't even have an issue of this type because your currency will be strong. Mm. You can't have a huge country like Nigeria with, that, with the level of export we have today. Last year, just to show you, give you an example, our total export is 18.9 trillion naira, which at the official rate is about $47 billion. At the rates anybody can get, about 650, is about under 30 billion. There's no way a country of this size can have that with the level. And I want you to allow me to give you an example of where. Please. So, so there's no way you can have that. We are 210 million people living on 923,000 square kilometers of land. Israel is 22,000 square kilometers. So if you minus them from us, we have 900,000 left. Yeah. There are about 8.9 million people. Let's call it 9 million. So if you give them 10 million people, we have 210 million people left. Their export last year is $59.8 billion. So they need to wipe what we did. For that number, countries of the, our the size... The how is where we... I'm going to tell you how Ooh. now. I'm going to tell you how. Countries of our size, let's put a country like Vietnam. Vietnam export last year is over 350 billion. billion. 100 million people, which is half of our population, yeah. living on 331,000 square kilometers, which is the third of our land. Of what do they do? Vietnam total export, 90% is manufactured goods, which includes electronics, taste, and everything. How? You have to go back. First thing I said, you have to deal with the issue of feeding yourself. Right. If today 
to secure Nigeria, put serious effort to secure Nigeria, and your farmers go back, resuscitate your bank of agriculture, mm. fund and support agriculture meaningfully yeah. the way it should be. Mm. Where those vast empty land in the north will become productive. And, and I want to, we will come back again to the how because I have questions around, you raised I'm issues you around power, but the audience, you know, this is a town hall, it's not okay. a Q&A. Yes. I want to try and bring in questions from people in the audience and also people watching from the house. So we are taking audience questions. Um, there's a gentleman in green, one in white, and another one in green over there. We'll take about four and then come back. You've, I think they've given you something to no write. Problem. Yes, and everything. So let's start with the gentleman in green. Yes, by the right-hand side here. No, there's a gentleman here, yes. We start here. We will get to all of you, I promise. You. Please introduce yourself. Good evening. Mr. Pitobi and Dr. Tati Babamed. My name is Dr. Nyakachi Unubogu. Um, I'm a marketing professional in around... Nigeria a lot. And the questions I'm going to ask you are not around the economy. Um, the question I'm going to ask you is around Nigeria. The biggest challenge we have today, apart from economy, is building a united, indivisible nation. One that we'll all be proud of. And when we see what's happening in the elections, there's a lot of mistrust, there's a lot of backbiting, bickering, and, and it just seems that the electionary, electionary season is making it worse for us. I'm going to ask you a very controversial but direct question. Would Pito B and Dr. Dati Babamed be willing in the interest of Nigeria to work with any of, that, any of the other two candidates to ensure that we build, call it a government of national unity, a government that eliminates the, the big print and the fights we have today in this political space? Will you be able to, because at the end of the day, that is what we want as a nation. A strong, free, indivisible United States. Thank Nigeria. you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. The next question, please. Yes, there's a mic on that side. So if we go that row, because there are like two, three people there. Yes, sir. Thank please you. don't forget to tell us who you are. Yeah, um, Mose Day 4 and Kadira, you're still looking glittering. I greet His Excellency, Mr. Peter Obi, the rock, the man generating the much buzz right now. I can almost say that what I heard in the news today, when I next um, it seem to be speculating that there could be a runoff. I can almost trace it to the fact that you are in the race. Almost say that. Um, and that's, um, for that, I've, we've dropped on you a lot, sir. I've heard many things you've said, and generate excitement, no doubt. But then, um, I ask, have you embraced climate change, global warming, um, greenhouse effect? And why have I asked? I read recently how that the president of um, Uganda, Museveni, um, decried the reprehensible double standard of the West when it comes to climate change. Germany is about closing down some windmills just to open, um, yeah, just to open some coal mines. On the one hand, they tell you that climate change is real, that we should reduce carbon effect and what, what have you. So I'm asking the His Excellency, how is he going to tackle that if he believes in that? And I'm just thinking aloud, we rest with the Vice President to be you run a private investor, won't there be a clash of interest with ASU? Your investment must thrive, your personal investment must thrive, but then ASU too must be solved. So how do you go about this? Thank, thank, thank you. The person next to him, please. Good evening. My name is Abubakar Sadiq. My question is very direct, and um, I would like um, um, Mr. Petrovi to answer it directly as I don't ask. A day after uh, Manambra State Governor, Mr. Soludo, critique your mood and style of campaign. His hometown was attacked by ECN. How does this portray your claim to ensure freedom of expression without fear of being um, maimed or killed? But eventually, if you emerge as the president, Please, we, we... if we criticize you, are we going to be saved? Like, are, we, are we going to be saved? That's the question. Thank you. Um, one last question, and we'll come back to it. Okay, I think we're done for now. Okay, so um, questions to both you and Dr. Baba Ahmed as well. Maybe we could start with the one of um, how you... Um, the ministry trust 
And perhaps maybe what we should ask is, how will you unify Nigeria? And would you be willing to go into a government of national unity? That was the first question. If you reach, if you follow our seven points of agenda, the first one is to secure and unite Nigeria. It is our commitment to ensure that the, we to ensure the security of life and property of Nigerians and to show a united and one Nigeria. How? Very easy. By ensuring that there's equity, justice, and doing things following the rule of law. If you check on my transits and everywhere, or that's it, Baba Ahmed's own, you will not see where we made statements like, don't vote for these people because they're from here, or statements like somebody said, consent Peter back to where it's coming from. We are people who have all over the place. I come from the Southeast, I live in Lagos, I live in the Southeast, I live in Abuja, I've traveled everywhere, and I've maintained that nobody should vote for me because I'm from the Southeast, or vote for me because it's my turn. I don't think the Southeast is clamoring for it, but pack our record. I will maintain so, and our backgrounds speak so. And I believe, and I've lived it. I said it today, most people as governor, the closest person to me is my ADC. Mm. My ADC is from Khan. I always say, it is the best policeman I've ever met. We remain close to today. The investment and dealing with other countries. And so is he. So, all of us, I think, tend to generally understand that the background to peace in most societies is respect for the rule of law. Yes. Right? And Nigeria suffers direly from the fact that actually the rule of law doesn't seem to apply evenly or equally. And, you know, there's impunity all over the place. So the question again is how? How are you going to move a country that is used to doing things a certain way, both in terms of the institutions that are charged with enforcing rule of law but also the culture of a people who are used to breaking laws willy-nilly. I'm not clear about the how. Like your judiciary. Once you do things based on, remember what, equity and justice. The else wins and they invite you. Would you join a government of national unity? Well, no, it's not inviting me that is the problem. I've always said it. You work with all that, you work, you show that you're working with Everybody, for example, I, somebody asked me that earlier today, and I said, at my stage in life, there's little or nothing I'm looking for in the sense of we're not looking for a job. But of course, why wouldn't I? It's my country. Even now that I'm not in office, I'm not in office, I still at all times defending various issues with regards to Nigeria. So we will. If we win, our government will be government of national unity, but it must be focused on youth and women. Okay. Women and youth. And we, not, we have specific questions about that, which I'll come to in a minute, sent to us by women group. Thank actually, you. Thank you. Some thank of you. them. Um, but before I leave you and go back to Dr. Baba Ahmed, there is a sort of a slightly related question. Somebody in the audience talked about the attack on Governor Soludo's home state, and ask you your position around ESN. Well, well, you know, people... And I want to piggyback off that and ask you specifically what you make of the agitation in the East, specifically your position on IPOB and ESN. Everybody knows my position on agitation. Uh, I've said I've dialogue and discuss with all agitators. Everybody, everywhere in the country is full of agitation. It is this accumulative effect of leadership failure over the years. There's nothing wrong in agitation. We we'll dialogue and discuss with everybody. What about the but attacks it, and the killings? That's what I'm saying. That what, what is said have no toleration. I've said, Soludo has taken a position on Soludo and said, it's my governor, it's my senior brother, and we're very close. What is said is his opinion. 
You cannot attack people for expressing their opinion. Otherwise, we'll be talking everybody on the road every day. You know how many people that tell me every day, you don't know what you're doing. Mm. If you can, said, I would have attacked you, sir. Yeah. If I'm doing that. <laughs> Everybody's telling me they don't have... So, so I have never knowingly, Peter, knowingly, knowingly, said use a bad language So would you condemn... Anybody. ESN now for all the attacks we've no, seen. No, I cannot the condemn killings, because I'm not sure death. who is doing what. You can't just come and be condemning people until somebody says, hey, wait a minute, how can I go? Every day, let me tell you, people say all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. You can only condemn people when there's a process which they have said, oh, this person has done this. So you don't believe Nigerian security services when INEC offices are attacked, when people have been killed? The late Dora Akunyeli lost her husband, and they say it is ESN. You don't believe it. Let me it. tell you. I personally, single-handedly, left Lagos without any single security. Took first flight to Owere. Drove to Giri police station to retrieve the body of Chika Akunyeli. Nobody did. I single-handedly, when I heard it, and or everybody knows, I was the last person to visit Dora Akunyele, a hospital in India, before she died. I'm very close to it's Dora right. and the family. Everybody knows. So I can tell you what happened to, 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 to Chika Akunyele. Nobody can say, is this person what happened? Chika Akunyele was just trying to drive back to Enugu, ran into people who were robbing and doing all sorts of things. And other things which nobody can explain. Even where he was trying to say, no, stop this, no, stop that, of course he was shocked. Mm -hmm. But you see, whenever things like that happen, people speculate all sorts of things and everything. Kenya, Nigeria is where people just so make be, up. Be, because there is a research that has shown a direct correlation between the announcement of the formation. There's of, no research. Let me, let me, let me, I, I, there is research. There is research. There's no a, research. There is research okay. that has shown a correlation between the announcement of the formation of ESN, the, some of the utterances of Namdi Kalu about take their guns, shoot their guns, and the spike in violence. People are saying if a witch is crying at night and you wake up in the morning, a baby, baby has died. Uh -huh. There is no. Okay. So I, you, have, I, have, I have about 10. Messages, yeah. Yes. Saying I should not come to your program. I know. That you're totally against me. I know. And I'm here. I told them, I said, a lot of meeting people who are against me. I know. And I'm I here. know. What they don't, what they don't. What... So if, I take, if I take all those witches. No, 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 I'm sorry. I want to see the witch those before are, I call it witch. Those, are... <laughs> those people. The... Beautiful people. Eh? No. No, what, what, what it is is that if people tell you not to come and answer questions that have been asked freely, then they are not ready for you to become. That's what I tell them. Everybody uh, uh, will uh, like you. Because, because yeah, you see, it's not just Kadri are saying these things. Every candidate who comes here, I put to them the things that are being discussed on social media and on, in the public space. And it is in their interest to answer Nigerians. So that's why you said yes. You know what I tell And them? I'm happy you said I yes. I said my sister, go there. Thank you. you know, and I believe you, I'm my grateful. sister. Let me move to the questions for Dr. Baba Ahmed. You were asked about your position on education, given the fact that you own a private university, and whether, as vice president, um, your government will have some sort of clash when it comes to dealing with ASU, who represent teachers in public universities that are government-owned, versus sort of you, who sort of make money from educating people? I don't make money from educating people. I make a career out of educating people. Right. Please explain. Your school is not free, is it? Then existing data, which is verifiable, my friend is welcome to Ujaiti. There is no yeah. correlation with the uh, length of time and the number of students in federal universities and state universities out of the classroom and our enrollment. Mm -hmm. We happen to be completely in different market segments. So there is absolutely no 
clash of interest you. between my humble self acting in the capacity of a vice president and how private and public universities are run. How would you bring in your fact, knowledge of where education? Where contradiction uh, will be yeah. is while somebody like me will be vice president and ASU would ever go on strike. Okay, so, 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 so here is the question. I would like to do yes. with the kind permission of Mr. President is the way he says he wants to sit down and dialogue with agitating groups. While he's doing that, I would like another group to quickly sit with ASU and extract a commitment that in that four-year period, they will not go on strike. Okay. So, and so please, there is actually no link between the interest of well-run private university and how ASU goes on strike. In fact, I was most pained Mm -hmm. all the time for those eight months. I, I just cannot believe Let, that let's, the let's, trillions of Naira in the Nigerian university system were allowed to waste. Okay, let's dig deeper a little bit into something you inferred in answering that question, which is that your knowledge of the way education works will, will come to bear in the way you solve the issues of tertiary education. Talk to us a little bit about what your plan would be for higher education in Nigeria, and then if we have time, you go into foundational education as well. How are you going to improve education, given where it is at the moment? There is something generic. Permit me to use this analogy of the DNA that composes the cell, that composes the organ, that composes the system of an organism. You see, in the DNA of governance is that function of procurement. Mm. You procure security, you procure works, you procure education, you procure healthcare, and where you're not efficient in doing that, all hell will let loose. Um, so there is a generic answer to the specific question you are giving me, and which is bringing us to the systems level I always speak about. If I speak about procurement, it touches education, it touches security, and everything else. It's this still, is the first way yeah. to deliver good governance. We will not spend money carelessly in such a way that 90% goes to personal, political, and group interest. Okay. Is Are you committing to dredging the Benue and the Niger if you become president? Of course, the contract has already been going. It's just that people have been collecting the money and going away. Right. Nobody will collect contract and go away under our government. Thank you. Let's, let's see if we can... We have, a young, we have young audiences across six Nigerian universities, six locations, and I want to see if they are ready with their questions, starting with... Bayero University, Kano. Hello, Bayero. Can you hear us? Hello, and welcome to Kano States. We are in Bayero University, Kano. My name is Tim Enoch, and um, students have been paying close attention. We want to ask so many questions, but we have only two people who can ask the questions. We have Esther Michael and Rahman Adida. Let's start with Esther Michael. Hello, good evening. My name is Esther Michael, hello. Good evening. My name is Esther Michael, a level 300 student of mass communication by Oral University Kano. Well, my question goes first. The, the Nigerian power sector has been privatized, and yet uh, the Nigerian government keeps spending billions of naira to private enterprise in form of support. Now, it is apparent that the power sector is not working as we keep having system collapse every now and then. Now, I would like you to tell us what would you do differently to make the Nigerian power sector work again? Thank you very much. Yes, and we have Rahman Adeza who has a question to ask Mr. Obi. Good evening, Mr. Obi. I am Rahman Adeza from Mass Communication Level 4 student. Sir, do you believe in Biafran self determination agitation? In a simple answer, Yes or no? 
Also, what is your idea of federalism and restructuring? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much and have a lovely evening. Thank you very much, um, Kano. Do we have another university ready or do we deal with these questions first? Okay. We'll go with the questions first, starting first with power sector, privatization, etc. Uh, I don't want to go into whether the privatization was dodgy, done well, with an issue with it. <laughs> I don't have an eye in the past, and I've maintained that we're going to look forward. I'm not going to waste everybody's time going to yesterday. Yesterday is gone. I'm going to go tomorrow. First is that you can deal with power issue as decisively as possible. One, today we have installed capacity of about 12 and a half thousand. Mm. But because of not having the transmission infrastructure to deliver that, and we don't have a distribution infrastructure to distribute that. Mm. First is to ensure as quickly as possible that you have the transmission infrastructure and distribution infrastructure to be able to transmit and distribute installed capacity of about 12 and a half thousand. And then centralized transmission still like we have. No, I said I'll decentralize it. We decentralize, right? I said I'll centralize it. Okay. That's what I said. Have the infrastructure to deal with that as quickly as possible. Okay. In doing Have that, you done the numbers? Numbers of? The cost. You forgot it. I've been all over the place, traveling to Egypt and everywhere. Yeah, because on average, a tra one kilometer of a transmission line costs about one million USD. Let me tell you, the amount of money we're wasting can deliver all those things. I've done all the numbers. Okay. You know, they will, we will. Canada, this country has borrowed in the past eight years, we borrowed nearly $100 billion. 10% of that would have put us out of delivered power. So I've done the numbers very well. The only thing I can do is numbers. <laughs> so I've done it very well. Okay. The rest are short. <laughs> what I'm saying is that you deal with that, as you're dealing with that, mm -hmm. and supporting the those who are in generation today providing a regulated environment that will support their business, giving them access to finance to support their business because okay. their business is troubled. All of well, them. you know they've had access to finance before in form of loans, in form of grants from CBN. Let me tell you. I said give them access to finance. Believe me, we didn't see all these things that they, 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 one of the yes. things they say they want is increase in tariff. Will there's you no, allow it? Of course, there's increase in tariff everywhere you go in the world. There's different tariffs for different areas. You can't charge people in Ikoi, the same as people in Ajegunle. <laughs> I will charge those who have to pay it, who have the resources to pay it. They will pay it. And then I will reduce the price for those who don't have. So those who are low income, you can subsidize. Those who have high income, they will pay the appropriate thing. And they are the ones consuming more. If you go to the average house in Ikoi, they have all sorts of things, different fridge in their bedroom and different In Ajegun, they have only one fridge in one. So I subsidize their own, charge the people in Ikoi appropriately. It's simple, because they can afford to pay it. Is that what we are talking about for subsidy? Everybody is paying subsidy. When there's people who have 12 cars there, yeah, and there's people in my village who don't have any car that pays for subsidy. So we want to charge people appropriately based on their, where we can make money from it. And, but that is delivering power, we will deal decisively with it. South Africa declared emergency power when they are generating 50,000. And we are generating 5,000 who declare war. You declare war on power? War on power. What does, I will tell what you, does war look like on power in practical terms? Is that more then, money? Okay. We are yeah. going to allow people, we are going to say, they 
anybody can generate up to 100 megawatts without license. Anybody who can generate power, if you can do one megawatt in your generating, anything you can do to have power will support you. We will give you all the support you need. No caveat, or there will be caveats and regulation and... Oh, there will be regulation, but the regulation will not be where it's impeded by all sorts of restrictions, tax, there will be proper supervision, there will be proper details, but we're not going to waste your time by various taxes, blockages, and everything. Um, the agitation for the state of Biafra and people's right to self-determination. Can you allow Mr. President to answer? <laughs> yes. He, he, he choose. Yeah. He choose. No, no, no. I will tell he, you. Tell you. His okay. answering will make more sense. Than okay. I've yeah. said it. He said it. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, my young, uh, because at this stage, I haven't had two graduates. I'll call the person who asked the question. I saw. Yes. yes. So I have two graduates at home. Let me tell you. When it comes to the issue of Agitation is not yes or no. People are agitated everywhere, even in my house. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So when the first thing you do with the agitator is to sit down and listen to the person who is agitating. Unless you sit down, you cannot say yes or no. I'm a Nigerian. I'm contesting the election as a Nigerian. I'm not contesting as any from any other place. I'm a Nigerian. I believe in Nigeria. I believe in unity of Nigeria. And I believe that I'm going to bring all agitators back to Nigeria and make it work for them. Because the reason why they are agitating is injustice. When you provide justice, equity, and create a level playing field, you have people start whatever, there will be agitation. Okay. So right. there was agitation. <laughs> there was agitation. There was agitation. For, don't forget, there was agitation yesterday in America. Yes. Before. Don't think America is like this. Mm. There was agitation before. There was agitation before in Brazil. A, I can show countries where there's so much agitation. But as, when level playing fields were created, where people had work, talent, much of the opportunity, all these things will go. Okay. So Just wait. He, he wants to ask I, something. I allowed my principal to answer this question because we have nothing to hide. Mm. When I joined this, his ticket, and just before I joined it, I faced a great deal of resistance and afterwards a great deal of difficulty, all centered around this. He is the best, best person to answer, and he has told you clearly, I allowed him because there is absolutely nothing to hide about uh, that, that, agitation or yeah. about his candidacy, about where he comes let, let from. Let's go a little bit into devolution restructuring, yes. which is another debate and things that are sort of in the public domain. We have conversations. So, um, do you believe in restructuring? And if you do, what does it mean to you? Because it means different things to different people. When you talk about restructuring, you talk about issue of constitutionality, dealing with the constitution, restructuring the country, is a constitutional matter, which has to be dealt with every day. Our government will be by consent. People need to sit down and decide this is the way we should go. It is not just so for national to conference again. Or? No, it's not a question. There's enough documents already. That there's enough conversation already. Now we can bring up and look at them and say all this. You know why people are talking about? So the consensus about? through national assembly. I'm trying to understand the of mechanism. Of course, for you to restructure Nigeria today. He must do so through National Assembly. Right. And it means that you need to come out with a convincing argument, which I can tell you about if you take issue of security. There's no reason why we should not have local government, state, state police, and national police. Okay. It is a part of restructuring. We're talking about, do you know at times why people are, are talking about issue of restructuring and it looks as if it's something difficult? It's because we're we are a consuming state which exists in this sharing formula, which we've already said we'll remove and put production formula. Production formula. We'll talk about production formula after we've spoken to the University of Ibad. Thank you. Niron, I hear you're on standby.
Uh, yes, we are standby here at the University of Ibadan, Oyo State. My name is Nero at this one. We have two of the students here ready to ask questions. First off, we'll start with uh, Samuel. Samuel, let's have your question. Good evening, Mr. OB. I am Samuel Adebola by name, a final student of the Department of Geography from University of Ibadan. So my question goes thus. Nigeria is too over-dependent on oil, yet we have enormous deposit of other natural resources that can pump money into our economy. So in diversifying the economy of Nigeria, do you have any plans on reviving the Agile Kusa steel company? If yes, how? This is because the steel industry is the bedrock of any industrialized nation. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, for that. that's uh, coming from somewhere. Okay. We have another question coming from uh, Dr. who is also right here as well. Dr. Good evening, Mr. Peter and um, Dr. Dati. My name is Demita Kweshala, a startup stand founder, also from the University of Ibadan. Having promised to make Nigeria a producing country, what roles would startup and SMEs play in growing the economy under your administration? And clearly state what your plans are for burdening entrepreneurs in the country. Thank you very much. Okay, those are the two questions from the University of Ibadan this evening. I want to say thank you very much for giving us the opportunity as well. Thank you very much. I'm um, over to you. Well, um, the first question is about the dependent on oil and diversifying the economy. Nigeria and the Ajakuta still. Yes, and the Ajakuta still. Let me all, all correct one thing people make a mistake about. Nigerian economy is well diversified, except that it's not productive. This because explains. the oil you people are talking about today, go and check our GDP. Oil contributes less than 10% of our GDP. However, oil is... 50% of government... No, no, I'm, I'm coming. It's 50% yeah. of government revenue and about 80% of our foreign exchange revenue because we have not made the other area productive. For example, oil agriculture contributes about 21% percent of the GDP when oil is doing less than 10 percent, but we allow that oil because we are not a productive economy. In doing that, if it, and it talked about other natural resources, that is also going back, yes, we have natural resources, but it's then going back to the same, you know, going back to the same extractive industry, which to me is a diminishing asset. Mm -hmm. We want to go to intellectual Production, the you know, third industrial, fourth industrial revolution, which is now brain. That is what we need to. Invest. And in doing that, so I, when I told you about Vietnam export, yes. I said it's less than 10 percent natural resource. Yes. Electronics is something percent. They are doing 60 billion. Mm. If they're doing Clothing, 32 billion. Footwear. They are doing more in footwear almost than we're doing in oil. But we're doing in oil. Mm. So, agriculture. So, let me give you an example of what I use every day. Mm. Netherlands. Our total export, I told you, is under 30 billion. Mm. Netherlands is 33,000 square kilometers. The agricultural export last year is 103 billion euros. Okay. $120 billion. When Niger State, where we have seven local governments occupied by bandits, is 76.3 thousand square feet, two and a half times the land. So we, the, we move this country from consumption so I, I think, to production yeah. by investing first in agriculture so we can feed ourselves and export. Okay, so th this sounds all really in amazing and fantastic, but I have a question about the immediacy and the urgency of some of the issues that are facing us. I can see how over a year or two years you can begin to do some of these things. If I think in terms of um, setting up, you know, um, agricultural places, getting people educated to produce shoes, all of that, these things take time. In the sense of the immediate issues facing us, as we speak today, people are getting kidnapped. As we speak today, farmers are paying 
ransom in order to go and farm. And some are not even farming I told at you all. That, I told you that our priority is to secure the country. Okay, so let's... That is number one Should priority. we talk a little bit about that and the how? Mm -hmm. No, we're not going to, I'm not going to tell you how. Ah, why? I can't tell you how I'm going, to, how I'm going to catch them. How can I tell you how? Now, <laughs> for these things, if I tell you, they won't be there and they'll find another route. So I'm not... All I say is that we are going to be... Call me... Kalea. Mm. I... And that about men will be in charge. Okay. I'm going to be commander in chief. I'm going to be in charge. I will make security a priority, and the security we are going to put in place will be responsive and responsible. Okay. So if we are not delivering, whoever is in charge. Two things that go. come up when you say that. As far as I know. And I can't say I know everything. It's possible I'm wrong, right? As far as I know, none of you has any experience of dealing with the sort of insecurity that Nigeria is facing now. Absolutely oh. untrue. Okay, no, so no, no, I, I said maybe I'm wrong. He's a military man. No, 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 I, said, I, said, I, said, I said maybe I'm wrong. So I said as far no. as I know. So if I'm wrong, <laughs> if I'm wrong, you tell can me I, I'm wrong. Can I just say something? Yes. <laughs> The moment you have the people in power not stealing your money, you're already getting richer. The moment they announce a government who are not complicit in bringing insecurity to your country, okay. you are already defeating insurgency and banditry. Okay. And that, that, that is... The moment they announce a group of people I, who mean business I, and who know business... Can you pause a little? You're, Please, your, please. your economy is already fixing itself. Uh, Dr. Bahamed, just pause for me a little. All right. You made a statement yeah. that is very heavy yeah. and very serious. Because we're having a national conversation watched by millions. You talked about a government that is complicit yes. in bringing insecurity. Yes. Implying that you believe yes. that there are people in government of that this particular government. Kadria, you can never implicit. tie me down. You can never put I me in trouble. I am asking you to clarify. I'm asking you to clarify what you said. Yes. I you repeat. said it. I, I didn't repeat. say it. Let me repeat. Um, the moment you have a government in place that is not complicit in bringing insecurity to your country, you are already defeating banditry. And you won't expand on that. Why should, the moment we say it, the goalposts change. Mm. Okay. Because if I talk now, and again, now, if I listen, talk now, they will say it's because I'm anti. Meanwhile, I am a people. So I have to ask the question. Listen, That's my Nigeria, job. Yeah, your question listen, is asking that. Okay. Right? Nigeria, okay. A lot has happened yes. to Nigeria. Nigeria is a very, very peaceful country. Used to be. No, it still is a very peaceful country because... If despite all the evils that have happened to Nigeria, mm. we are still managing to keep the, the numbers so low, I think Nigeria, Nigerians by nature are peaceful. Okay. So you won't tell us how you will solve insecurity because you believe you'll be giving away Ni your secret. Nigerian let me, let, let, let me give you one of the examples. Okay. Kadria, People really like my name, Shah. If you start pulling people, <laughs> if you start pulling people out of poverty, you start reducing criminality. It is the it is number one thing for Brazil, Mexico, I can call countries that kind of countries uh, whereas and Southeast Asia have used to fight insecurity. Right. So, I mean, the reason why I'm kind of looking at my phone is I'm looking at the, the numbers. The other ones we'll deal with. There were yeah. two questions, but I haven't seen the question. The, the, the question second the question act. was... Um, I, I so, wasn't... I didn't even get to the issue of... He <laughs> was talking about the issue of Jokuta Steel and everything. Yes. All those projects will be looked into, see their viability. What are you doing differently from this government? Because this government does have a steel program. No, and no. Ajakuta is being discussed while another steel plant has, you know, no, is in no. the process of being built. Let me, let what me. are you going to do differently? I don't want to say anything we're going to do differently, but we're different people. Okay. That's what I believe. <laughs> okay. If you believe that two of fours are well created, we're not well shared. We didn't benefit from what is being shared. We created well. 
and created wealth as youth people, as both in private and as a public person, run he, corporations that are successful. They are my, as governor of Anambra State, yes. when you left off, yes. your IGR was 500 million a month. Really, Obianu came, and within months, that IGR had become 1.2, 1.3 million, seemingly able to outperform you. So sometimes when people hear you say, can I, can I, can I tell you one? Can I tell you one? You see, you see, people don't look at the foundation. I built the process that made it possible. It couldn't have been one month. You did it. Let me tell you. I built. Go and check. I, go and check. No, when can I? I built the. I built the IGR building. Mm -hmm. Computerized it. Right. Did everything. So when people say somebody came yesterday and he started working. Look at the foundation. Okay. It was me who laid the foundation. You know, I made it to work. Okay. It didn't print money. Let me not say what happened thereafter. <laughs> so I built that foundation. We're going to have to take a quick break. And when we come back, we go to our other... New Central TV, Africa's number one storyteller, has come with the best of both worlds. With a combination of news app and live TV, we ensure that you keep track of the latest headlines, breaking news, and in-depth analysis from professional journalists from around the continent. Download the New Central TV app on Android and iOS and get started today. Don't forget to follow us on New Central's social media platforms. New Central, Africa first. Welcome back. You are watching The Candidate, a Daria Media Town Hall series brought to you with the support of the MacArthur Foundation and in partnership with Nigerian Television Authority, Cabal Entertainment, Network Service of Radio Nigeria, Emmanuel Chapel, Citizen Zikoku, Silverbird Television, Cross TV, New Central, and NJNJ Television. Now let's go to um, the audience and get a few questions from them. And before we do, um, I kind of like that you're all here and you're engaged, you're exciting. But if we could keep the noise a little bit down because it is interrupting a very important conversation. I'm sure you all want people at home to hear him clearly and for me to be able to allow him to finish answering his question. I would appreciate that. Thank you so much. There's a lady in blue in front and the lady next to her, and then we can go to the back after that. Let's have a few ladies, please. We've not had women speak. We're supposed to have two microphones, so where are they? Can you guys move and hand them? She's in front, please. We will make our way to the back. Let's start with the ladies, because we've not had a woman talk. Thank you, ma'am. Do I have to stand up? You can sit. You Thank can you. Sit. Good evening, gentlemen. So I have three questions. They better be fast. <laughs> yes, my name is Ereti Bakari. Um, my first question is to do with SMEs. I'd like to know, most SMEs complain about self-taxation. Do you intend to eradicate that? If so, would you be able to afford to? No. Self. So the taxes that are hidden. Self hidden, so triple taxing that's number one. Number two, if you were, and this is hypothetical, but if you were president today, would you sack the CBN governor? Yeah. Number three, <laughs> once you become president, are you willing, bold, and brave enough to imprison those found guilty? of corruption, including the current president, if he's found guilty. Thank you. Good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Priscilla Amadi. I'm still going to ask some about SMEs because I'm particularly happy about the fact that the president is very interested in moving the country from consumption to production. Um, according to the Nigerian um, Bureau of Statistics, SMEs in Nigeria have contributed about 48% in of the national GDP in the last five years, with a total number of about 17.4 million. They account for about 50% of industrial jobs and nearly 90% of the manufacturers 
manufacturing sector. Now, Mr. Peter, how would you be able to further empower the sector? Because even though they contribute a well, they contribute well to the economy, they still face massive challenges, especially in various sectors, including really, really lack of skill power. It's really, people keep their questions short. There's yes, a lot I of will. people <laughs> who want to answer, ask, and we still have people in Nigerian <laughs> universities. And if people have asked the same question, please don't repeat it. It isn't the same. I was coming to the part of empowering the SMEs because they are really facing a lot of challenges. Okay. Mr. Peter, what would you do differently, sir? Thank you. Please give um, the three, four people at the back so many questions. Quick, and we need to be fast. Good evening, everyone. My name is Santos. I'm from Human Capital Africa, and I'm going to education. Um, you've spoken a lot about education, Mr. Peter. Um, and we're in a region where nine out of 10 children at the age of 10 can't read with meaning. And foundational learning, um, it, it's almost zero. Um, we also are in a region where the Dakar Pact has said that you spend 15 to 20% of your national budget on education. Nigeria spends around 5 to 6%. If you're elected president, how would you address this foundational literacy and numeracy? Thank, and how thank you, you thank you, thank you very much. It's important to say that if you insist on prefacing your questions, we can't get everybody in. Your presidential candidate has all the context. He understands the play. So please, no more questions. We're going to the remote sides. Meduguri is on standby. We've got very limited time. We have, we have to be disciplined. Yeah. Okay, no, may, let's take a few more from University of Meduguri, then we'll lump them all together. Yes, Meduguri, we can hear you. Good evening, Nigeria. Uh, welcome to University of Meduguri. Uh, we have two questions from the students here for the presidential candidates, starting with Abdul Salam. Abdul Salam. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, my name is uh, Abdul Salam Ilyasu, and my question is, uh, Mr. Obi, what can you do to convince a rural man who has been influenced by the existence of PDP and APC to vote for the Labour Party? Thank you, sir. Next, we have Sadu Ella. Good evening. My name is Yes, please carry on. Good evening. My name is Sadu Banyawa from the University of Medjugorje. Nigeria has been designated as one of the poverty capitals of the world. I want to know what the presidential candidate and his deputy plan, what their plan to reduce the rate of poverty in the country, and also what strategies will they employ to bridge the gap between low-income earners and the middle class? Thank you. Okay, so I'm um, just to also say... Thank you very much, Medugri. Can people please try not to repeat questions? We've got very limited time, and it's important that we give them an opportunity to talk about as many things as possible. So if someone has already asked a question, please don't repeat it. Okay, Saz. Let's come back to you. Well, let me start from the uh, issue of Medugri, because I'm sure there's a long way to ask this. It says, what are you going to do, if I understand the first question, to make people to move away from PDP and APC to Labour Party? I think it's very simple. They drove us at this junction. If you have a driver that has driven a vehicle where you've come to a point where the vehicle has an engine problem, the vehicle can no longer move, you're not going to allow the same driver to continue. But, Mr. Obi, we want to fix this vehicle. But you wear that vehicle. No. Just as, late, as early Just as 2019, you no, were in PDP. Listen, he was in be, PDP. No, no, no. One minute, one minute. And you know APC. That, no, 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 no. Let me tell you. ANPP. Let me tell you. Moses lived in Egypt. <laughs> okay. So was Joseph. Mm. They were part of it. God comes and chooses. From within, it's not going to create new people. From within those who are there already, and save these people, that save the situation. So it is the, it didn't create new people. It didn't create new creation. It is from the same people that it said. So I'm this, picking this one. This is not able, old so, wine, just packaged no, no, in new no, bottles. No, no, no. This is new wine, but we have been existing with the old wine because they are not. But they found out that 
This is, we cannot continue living with this. You know, it's like living, you live in an environment where you find out that this environment, you're not part of it. Mm. All the first class leaders that we have all over the world, we are part of the same society. But they decided we can no longer live this way. Even discoveries with the, all the people who have done it everywhere, it is simply challenging the status quo. Mm. That's what we're doing today. Okay. That's what yeah, the is doing. I mean, let's That's why you're seeing something yeah. different. So and people will say you are status quo. How let's do we move put on. people out of power? Yes. It goes to what's wrong. And will you sack CBN governor? There are few. No, no, I'm going to come to that. Okay. You know, pulling people out of the poverty is what we are preaching when we are seeking from consumption to production. The problem the is more... that we're not getting a grasp of no, exactly how you, you, this is going you to not, happen. You are, you are not seeing it. It doesn't, it's, it's, you see, when you want to change a society, mm. the cause majority of the people, including yourself, live off the old order. Mm. They don't see the future. Mm. That's, why, that's why they say, that's why they say, leader must be a visionary. We to, want to understand when I went the to vision. Anambrasse, let me give you an example. Yes. When I went to Anambrasse and said to people, our education cannot continue to be at 26. We're going to change our education. We're going to change it. They said, no, you can't do this. Because we're not seeing it. You know, when you were talking about me being impeached in production, you forgot that I challenge, when I challenge my election, people say it's impossible to come through the court. Mm. When I was impeached, people say it's impossible to come back. And later, when I challenge interpretation of tenure of governor, they say it's impossible. So people are not seeing that. We are creators. We're seeing the future. Mm. And I can tell you, how do people vote? No, no. And, you ask me and, you ask no, no, and, the and let me just clarify. We are me, not saying you don't have a vision. Let me tell you. What how? we want to, want to see is understand the roadmap to, to how. that vision. I want to tell you the how. People are here about MSMEs. Micro small businesses is the foundation of every economy. Even in the South, in the West. In the West. Globally. The two, and, but I, let me use what we can call a developing, and those who are starting to give you an example. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to use big countries like China, Indonesia, and Vietnam history to give you an example. In China, MSMEs controls 60% of the production, 60% of the export. And about 60% of the employment, and they contribute 50% of the revenue. So how is that going to budget. happen here? Thank you. First, is that you must articulate a proper agenda, like China. In China today, if you look at the overall banking lending in China, about 20% to 25% of the lending is degraded to MSME. In Indonesia, mm. there's a ministry for MSMEs because they control 90% of the employment. So is it in Vietnam? In Nigeria, out of about, I think it's over 30 trillion land today and everything, MSMEs control. Less than five percent. So, how are so, you going to encourage banks, which are private enterprises, to give loans to SMEs? Because I'm, this is, is the answer we're looking you, for. Listen, I'm coming from that side. Okay. Don't forget. I know. I'm That's why I'm asking. My life is about finance. That's what I've done all my life. It's a combination of two main things. You have to have a physical and monetary policies channeled as this: government grants. Anchor Farmer Borrower Programs? No, not, yes, but done differently. Not the announced in Abuja, mm. but dealing with the bank of industry and going to deal with the people, the farmers. Because what you have now is that good programs announced on TV, but poorly implemented. The people don't do what is expected here. They do what is expected. I will be there with the farmers. I will be there with the people. I'll supply it directly, and I'll get it done. Uh, Adria, yes. can I just come in? Yes, please. 
Mr. President, uh, uh, our candidates told us that corruption kills hard work, enterprise, and innovation. There is a certain disequilibrium in our system. Uh, you see, necessity is the mother of innovation. We need to innovate, force people to leave the present preoccupation, which is government contract, and go into SMEs. That they're so we have to do it by force. Okay. That is what I need you to see. Now, let and, me, and uh, let me answer Bielsa you. When Bielsa has finished talking... Hold on, let me just answer okay, you. Okay, just finish this. Okay, Ye go yes. on. Yes. If anybody can get a government contract mm. and make uh, nine times profit right. from that simply because he's a relative, acquaintance, gatekeeper, or influencer in government, such people will never go into enterprise. Here is a government coming into place to say that there is no more easy money. That 90%, nine times, 900% profit you used to make is no longer there. That money is, belongs to all Nigerians. That is what we are going to do that is different. When Nigerians realize that they can't go and rely on their uh, relatives in government to make easy money, they have to go into industrialization. Okay. And, and, and I will ask so you again the how when we come back. We've got Bielsa on the line. One sentence. Yes. Let me give you one sentence what okay. he's saying. All right. Which you will borrow this because everywhere. Mm. We must stop people wealth without enterprise. Thank you. All wealth must come with enterprise. enterprise. Okay. Thank and you. again, you, I will come back to the how after we have spoken to Bielsa. Hello, Bielsa. Good evening, Kaderia. Welcome to Bielsa State. My name is Victor Pinawari, and we have two people that will be asking questions from this station. I would like to move to Emmanuel quickly. Emmanuel, please step forward and ask your question. Thank you, sir. We, we, okay, well, we can't hear you. We seem to have audio problems. So I think maybe if we um, go back to the questions back, around back political, yes, yeah, CBN governor and political allegiance. Let me I tell think. you. Uh, please. And, okay. Ah, are you back, Bayelsa? Uh, okay. My question. Okay. Yes, Excellency, this question is for you. Today, all Nigerians are leaving the country to Europe and other parts of the world. Doctors are leaving and our best brains are leaving. If you become the president of Nigeria, how will you reverse this trend of mass exodus of our people? How will you make Nigeria acceptable and livable for its people? Also, if you become the president of this country, by which constitution will you operate in this country? If you are to operate with the illegitimate 1999 constitution, why will you do that? Thank you. Okay, okay quickly, we'll move to Honorable Elliot for his question. Now, good evening, the Peter of the and his wife. I am Augustus Elliot Osomo, Christ. a former legislator from Bielsa State. Should you become the president of this country, how would you solve the problem of environmental pollution in the Niger Delta region, where the wealth of this nation comes from? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Bayelsa. And because we're running out of time, I'm going quickly to Enugu before we come back to Mr. Obi and Dr. Baba Ahmed. Enugu, can you hear us? Okay, well, Enugu doesn't seem to be ready, so we'll go back to the to answers to this question. Well, uh, the issue of sucking off CBN government. Yes. Enugu. Ah, right, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, we can hear you. Good evening from Enugu. I am a former Ajuwobi. Got two questions. Blessing and Valentine have some questions, and they would address it to the candidate. Valentine, please, let's hear you. My name is Antonio Belago, 
um, I'm greeting Sominuku. Please, my first question is, you have spoken a lot about improving the agricultural production in the north. But please, how would they achieve this, given that there is a very high amount of banditry in the recent years? And my second question is that, <clears throat> my second question is that if you're elected, how would you cope or put reforms to stop other criminal activities in the country, such as the unknown government in the East and the kidnappings around the entire nation? Thank you. We have Blessing on standby as well for her question. Blessing. Good evening from Enugu. My name is Blessing Chimeze. Sir, if elected the president of Nigeria, you said you will remove subsidy. So I want to know how do you intend to manage the effects of subsidy removal on the masses, particularly? Because this will result to the increase of cost of fuel and also to the increase of commodities in the market. Thank you. That's the much we have from Enugu. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And um, if you could treat this almost like a rapid fire round okay. because second of, of time. Second of CBN governor, it depends on the reason. He can't just get up and sack CBN governor. Are you happy with his performance now? Well, I, I'm not. I didn't appoint this one. But you are going so to, I, if, I, if when, you become president, you will inherit him. No, 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 no. no. Don't worry. What the hell happened then? When I become, and I'll deal with that matter then. You will have only one year to go. You know, so don't worry. I'm not going to sack him. <laughs> okay. But I'll assure you, it depends on what is happening then. Right. On the issue of fighting corruption, my position is known. I'm not going to fight corruption by being vindictive. We're going to study, make sure that there's a proper investigation and everything. We're not going to criminalize the country the way it's been done now, where they are running after people up and down. If you don't like somebody's case, you just nickname him. No. We will operate by the rule of law. Will you do that? There will be law and order. We will I will ask sure you this question. There's a because... proper investigation. There's a proper this. Where will even negotiate that will negotiate? That's what I'm need, asking because you, you keep referring to, be in to Indonesia. What I need is mm -hmm. money to come back. So can use it to work. If you put people in jail and they take away the money, what are we going to do? With? When other countries of the so, world who have done it better, and I've learned from them, if it means We that, already have a law here, the whistleblower laws, the laws that, that... I'm not going to go back. Okay. I'm going to put a new law from the day I start. Right. If you take money... This is what is going to happen. But nobody will take because I'm sure they will know that if I'm not taking, but the, it shouldn't take. But, but the now, laws, going back, as president, I'm going to go back in an organized manner. I'm not going to go and be going around all over the place. Okay, but because you refer to you will make laws, and uh, laws are made by the no, National no, they're, Assembly. They're, that's what I'm saying. I'm going, to, I'm going to go to the National Assembly and say, this is a law for corruption. Mm. And this is how we intend to implement And if they refuse to sign it? No, no, there's things we'll do. No, don't worry. I'll do I'm done with this now <laughs> in Anambra State. Go and see. No money was missing in Anambra State. Uh, if it was missing, Canaria, it is not easy for somebody to leave an office where nobody's asking you and you left $150 million. Um, according to the person who came after you, you left you left dead. That no. argument has been going back. Canary, he he you said you had contractors no, to pay and you didn't me, pay listen them. Listen very, well, listen very well. Up to today, mm. up to today. I'm quoting the son interview by Mr. Willie Obiano. Listen very careful, mm. Canary, Listen to me. Up to today, I've said this, and let me say it now in this time of meeting. The day I left office, I was not only one contractor who have complete, we have executed his job, certificate issue. Let that one come. I'm not only one supplier who has delivered what we ordered and we're owing the party. I'm not only owing civil servant, salary, pension, gratuity. If any of them come out today, I will stop. Okay, so, so let, let, let me ask for thing. clarity. Let, let me ask for clarity. It is a maintenance thing if I award a contract for nine kilometer road. Somebody build one kilometer and I pay him. 
Yes, no. Because I will only so, pay for what so, I received. So, so the allegation he made was no, that no. just before you left peace, you gave out a lot of contracts no, and he had to it, deal with paying for those contracts. Leave allegation. Okay, I'll leave Let's allegation. Let's issue that is real. <laughs> Let me tell you how government works. Mm. If, for example, let the government, outgoing government of Buhari, award all the roads. When you come, you will pay. No, when I come, the one you do, you pay. Another person will come, do his own and pay. Okay. That's why you can Nobody finishes everything. In That's late, why I said that yeah. the one I've not done, let other people complete. There was a question about the constitution you know, that was described true. as illegitimate no. and how, whether I you were working it. There's a lot of uh, questions. There's a lot of questions which we need to quickly deal with. We still have to deal with somebody Abuja. with issue. So issue of brain drain. Yes. Yeah. Let me tell you, everywhere in the world where there's been a brain drain, actually, if they do the right thing, you know what will happen? All those brain drain, I tell them, there will be brain gain. They will because they'll be the first investors to come back when I and Daddy start turning around here. Mm -hmm. They will come back with their investment. The first foreign investor you attract in any country is people who have left from your system. We have made money abroad. When they now see opportunity here, they will come back. Like I always say, when people go at that, that's what remittance is, I said we'll double it. How are we going to double it? When we produce a conducive environment for them to bring more money, today they are remitting only 5% 5, 5 of the income. They will remit 10 to 20. But they start coming back to invest here. It is more conducive. They start coming back for holidays and everything. And we'll do that. So bring Drain will be brain gain in the future. Watch it happen. Thank issue you. of the constitution. It's neither here nor there. What am I saying? Any constitution, don't forget that a country like Britain doesn't have a written constitution. Any constitution is prone to amendment. That's why we're talking about restructuring. We will sit down and come out, don't call it a fallen constitution. We haven't even implemented that the fraudulent one mm. justly. Mm. So let's start with it. And then we will amend it in order or restructure it as we agreed. Right. It's a government of consensus. We're not going to govern by military mind. It is, we have to sit down with everybody, agree to what we're going yeah. to do and everything. Yes. SMS by stealth. The stealth what? taxes of the SMSs. I've said that the engine of growth is MSMEs. I was answering when and I told you, SME, MSMEs is the engine in which we're going to develop the place by putting money, supporting our youth, the greatest assets of this country today, physical human asset, is our youth. Mm. With the energy and talent, what they need is for us to put money into them. If we put money into them today, would, when we talk about the anything, whether it's agriculture or this, like, I have to say, remove corruption. No easy one. Corruption is entrepreneurship. You get these young ones to be able to be supported possibly in everything. Let me give you just in closing, because I'm sure you will say we we'll close. Well, we still but, have a few remote okay, sites let me just as give well. So, yeah. So, Melu Melu Foundation. Say that for every young person they give five thousand dollars every year, they find that a year or so after the person is employing twenty percent. Okay. My sister, this fund I borrowed in the past eight years about hundred billion dollars. If we have decided to use 10 billion to share it among them, okay. can you do the number? I am trying It'll to. It will be phenomenal. I I'm actively in Oputu, still alive. I was the first governor in Nigeria mm. to go to Bank of Industry. In fact, shockingly, it happened on a Sunday. Mm. I said, MD, can I come and see you? He said when I said, can I come tomorrow? I was calling him on Saturday. 
He said, tomorrow but I have to go to church. I said, well, I'm coming to see you. It's about church. Yeah. Church is about solving. We all go there to pray for God to solve our problem. Mm. Part of it is we will pray and God will solve the problem and come into I went to our office on Sunday. I said, Anambra State wants to partner with Bank of Endos. Where we will invest 50% of what we're going to bring. You bring 50% and you lend money to MSMEs in Anambra State. One act. Is that? And what's, Sorry, the, on. what's the result of that intervention? Well, the result is for you to go and look. No, you know, people talking, have said... There are Nigerians 20, that can't go to Anambra. You have to tell them. In 2014, when I left office, mm. go and check. In terms of poverty, mm. lowest place we have poverty, Anambra is number three with 11.2%. Okay. People, uh, I've had people even say, I said, they don't know. 11.2. Yeah. After Lagos, it's one of that state, it's an umbrella state. Go and check. Thank you very much. We need to go to Abuja quickly. We're running out of time, and I don't want people who've taken the trouble to sit down. Oh, where are we going? Um, the social media questions are not ready. Is, that, is Abuja ready? Okay. All right. So we'll carry on. Talking. Let me, okay, yes, can I just you want to add say something? two things. Regarding the Nigerian youth flowing out of Nigeria, yeah. I said that it is better to have brain drain than to have a brain in the drain. Um, it is necessary to protect the future of our youth by allowing them to mm. engage the careers they can get elsewhere and otherwise they could not have been able to get here. That is when His Excellency said that, and that can be followed by brain gain. Then the other issue I want to add here is that why buy fuel cheap and buy security expensively? This has to do with the removal of subsidy. Some I'm people uh, are simply looking at the price of refined petroleum product. You buy it cheap, and then you buy security more expensive. Can Does I that make sense? You? And what we're yeah. saying is that there is a way to reform governance at the same time reshaping industries and businesses. So, so, so if you mm. remove what is in subsidy and solve the problem of security. Yeah. Security is cheaper. You cannot put a Naira figure to it. Okay. So, I mean, we keep talking about and this subsidy. Is by and, far, and this is by far uh, a better gain, trade-off to make. The, the, a it's more global, sensible. Mm. Uh, it touches the entire society. Uh, who has a car, who doesn't have a car, uh, consuming security. But, I, uh, I, I, I hear you, as, uh, but if I could ask, yes. you know, for a sort of a more broadened conversation around yes. energy yes. and energy security yes. and diversification yes. and the fact that um, increasingly, very soon, our oil is actually going to be worthless because, you know, the rest of the world is moving and looking at doing clean energy and all sorts of things. And, and I'm just sitting here and I'm wondering whether um, you've you guys have put together a policy that is in tandem with the realities of today and tomorrow and what is being projected to happen. Because even the petrol, even if we now go back to, let's say, full production, within a very short period of time, our oil is no longer going to be valuable. Well, Maybe to us, right? But not to the rest of the world. And so I'm, I'm, I'm listening, I'm thinking, okay, where is the sort of, the, the forward thinking, the ideas. That's Can what I we're hear? telling you about production. You are talking in generalities no. and not specific. It's a generality. I've told you that it's a simple thing. We will invest in key development areas, which is, if you talk about HDI, One. you talk about HDI, mm -hmm. what is in HDI? Right. Health, mm -hmm. education, yes. and per capita. Okay. Which is pulling people out of poverty. Yes. The question you ask is... How are you governor, delivering health, for example? As governor, what did I do to these three? 
Yeah, if I remember correctly, doctors were on strike during your time for it about 11 months. Is that the thing? That's a, even teachers were on strike. <laughs> so it's not only doctors. <laughs> and when they go to strike, but when, I, when you bring a change, all those who live of the old order who go on strike. Okay. Nigeria will be on so, strike so when we start. Let's be because, <laughs> because let me tell you, when all these people who are living of the old order, I'm going to protest. Okay. You realize, I'm not going to go out. You realize I keep trying to get us to go to the granular well, level. Say, and we granular. keep talking about let generalities. Me tell you granular. Right. When I became So health, governor. for example, let me ask specific questions. I, when I became At the governor. moment, when you I talk about governor. human capital. Let me tell you, okay. When I became governor, mm. we decided we were going to deal with health. Yes. We found out we didn't even have the human infrastructure needed for primary care. No single school of nursing, midwifery, health technology, everything was accredited in the entire state. And I want to, it's on tape, so go and verify. I said, listen, we're going to deal with it. They came with others of plan. I said, no, we are going to partner with agencies that are dealing with it already. We have Church of Nigeria. They have school of nursing. School of Midwifery, all this in a hospital called Ienu. We have other facilities owned by these uh, churches and development agencies. So where are we going to put money doing a new one? Because you're talking about strike. Because if I put money in that one, today go to Anambra State, we have over a dozen Combined school of nursing, school of midwifery, school of health technology, all functional. I built the fastest teaching hospital ever built in Federal Republic of Nigeria. Odmego Juku Teaching Hospital today. He has built the biggest private hospital, teaching hospital in Nigeria today. I built so, the fastest as a governor. So I can go on and on and tell you what I did in health. Yes. In education, I don't need to, only just yesterday, a, a, a bishop said, Peter we should be able to replicate what he did in education nationally. Okay. Where we move from number 26 to number one. Mm -hmm. Besides, the only measure of development between the year 2000 and year 2015 mm. is Millennium Development Goals. Yes. I started implementing it in year 2007. When it was concluded in year 2015, I was number one in this country. Mm. So it is not a question of how. On top of all this that I said, I've said it where you say people are doubting. I've called the three banks where I left money. None of them have ever come and say, I didn't leave money. What you hear is that, not even the person I handed over said I didn't leave money. All you hear is that, I, I, uh, this youth, this group, that group, I didn't hand over to a group, I handed over to somebody. Mm -hmm. And I want that person to come and say, I didn't see this money. Okay. Let me, let me quickly just ask you to deal a little bit, the issue of health. Only 3% of Nigerians at the moment have any sort of proper health coverage. Yes. And the reason why I've been asking you to sort of go into this with a bit more detail is because I've seen bits and pieces of you talking about a plan you have to deal with to the give issue of insurance. You, it, so insurance. I, I wanted to get a sense you of what to that deal with means. The issue of health insurance. Okay. That is what is done everywhere in the world. By by getting everybody in that basket, you're going to get the big, the small, and everything. That is what you need to. So private-driven health care through insurance? Government has to contribute. So government majorly. will pay for some of it? Majorly, because that's the only way those facilities can reach the poor. Um, how much priority are you willing to give foundational learning, primary school education, compared with other stages of education? I think somebody else asked Foundation it learning is the key. Right. It's the first thing, it's the critical thing. Remember what I told you, three things is what you use to measure development. The more educated your people are, the more development they have. Right. Today, you cannot, your human capital is about 168. Okay. But it's very low. I'm going to ask you to make so your you can... closing statement because unfortunately, despite our best efforts, we have not been able to even get through to Abuja. I'm sure they will be disappointed. And we are about to wrap. 
So essentially, if you could tell me what your unique selling point is, tell Nigerians in a nutshell, again, remind them why when February they go to the polls, they should vote for the two of you. Okay. Two of us have appealed to Nigeria. Next year, the election should not be based on tribe. No tribe buys bread cheaper or have better roots and everything. It should not be based on religion. No religion buys bread cheaper or have been able to employ everything. It should not be based on my turn. It is turn of Nigeria to take back their country. Mm -hmm. We have promised we will secure and unite this country. That's your promise. We have promised we will ensure that we move Nigeria from consumption to production, start pulling people out of poverty. We will ensure we will work with rule of law, deal with the issue of corruption, where we bring it to a minimum. We will govern from the front. We will be in charge. And we will make Nigeria work we are, today we don't have, we have a Nigeria, but we don't have Nigerians. We will create Nigerians. Mm -hmm. We will be proud of their country because we will be in charge. It, 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 it will stop at our desk. And we work as a brother. No team in this equation can beat our team. Um, <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Peter Obi and Dr. Datibaba Ahmed for honoring our invitation to take part in this town hall. Our gratitude to the MacArthur Foundation who made the candidates today possible. We would also like to thank our other partners, Nigeria Television Authority, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, Zikoko Citizen. Um, I'm struggling to remember the partners. Um, uh, Trust TV, Silverbird TV, Kaftan TV, Injenja TV. Join us again tomorrow for the fifth and second to the last edition of The Candidates. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.